true. All right. I'd like to thank everyone for being here today. It's the right good debate. We're getting right to it. The topic we have for today is that the U.S. should take actions towards Saudi Arabia. And so we're going to define this as a policy debate. Some terms we're going to define should as in to do something, take action as in provide assistance towards just kind of contextual is going to be for uh, Saudi Arabia, the country. So the so that's terms. Okay, so plan text. I really rest. Plan text. Congress will send uh, fifteen thousand troops from our military of embedded training troops and military advisors with equipment and with equipment. And it's going to be uh, funded by a uh, five hundred million dollars. Uh, did you mean fifteen thousand or fifteen hundred? Oh, fifteen hundred. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little sick, so I just yeah, fifteen hundred troops. <laughs> All right, so. And it's going to be through normal means, and it's going to be happening immediately. Any questions? What are they there to do? They are there to provide, well, we're going to get that through more of our plan text, but basically they're going to provide strategic assistance and advisement on how to defend their country of Saudi Arabia, how to fight against ISIS, and how to uniquely defend their borders because they're going to build a 600-mile border, which is something new to their country, which is something that the United States has Many years of experience since we already have a border and we have our coast guard and the people guarding and we know how to defend borders, or at least successfully at a high rate. <laughs> and so the net benefits is going to be, or the criteria is going to be net benefits. Observation two, advantage one, we're going to call this a uh, genocide. The sub point A is the harms, is that ISIS is willing and able to commit genocide with things such as torture, slavery to women and kids, and committing mass murders, and uh, murdering of over 100,000 of innocent uh, Middle Easterns. And according to CBS News on November 14, that it says that Saudi Arabia cannot keep ISIS out of its territory. So we see that I, Saudi Arabia cannot uh, single-handedly, without the assistance of United States, uh, keep ISIS out of the country and so from that we also see another harm is that ISIS on January 2013 uh, did a suicide bomb attack on three guards on the border near of Saudi Arabia killing uh, three guards of Saudi Arabia one of them actually being even a high-ranking general so we see that uh, ISIS is trying to expand their grounds and also ISIS has officially even stated that they want to conquer Saudi Arabia. So now that we know they want to conquer Saudi Arabia, that's just going to increase the amount of genocide that's going to be taking place in the country of Saudi Arabia. We've seen this in the past through evidence of countries like Iraq and uh, Syria. And this is something that we do not want to expand to Saudi Arabia. So we're going to definitely take some action. And the inherency is, is that uh, Saudi Arabia needs the proper assistance with the money and uh, advisements on how to defend themselves against ISIS, how to take the fight against ISIS, and the United States have done this many times in the past. We have provided military assistance and training to countries like Iraq and Syria. So this will be something that's not new to the uh, United States. It's something that we have experience with and could do very effectively for Saudi Arabia. So the impacts of this is going to increase the fight against ISIS, which will in the result decrease the strength and power of ISIS and it's going to decrease the ability and capability of ISIS to be able to commit genocide and crimes like uh, torture, slavery, mass murders, all these horrible crimes that should be that should have action taken against in the country of Saudi Arabia. And not only that, but Saudi Arabia, with their assistance from the United States, can help just like push back on ISIS, which just is an overall benefit for all of the Middle East. And so observation three is going to be advantage number two of the geo strategy. The, so point A is the harm that ISIS, I mean, sorry, uh, Saudi Arabia's land is a very strategic benefit for ISIS because of their oil. And we know throughout history that ISIS does really well at extracting the oil when they take the over territory. And we've seen this in Iraq and Syria. They, they get over millions of dollars a day from these oils that they have from their oil territory. And when they get these oils, that's how they fund their guns and that's how they able to fund their army. And if, 
and Saudi Arabia has a lot of oil in their country, and that's one of the reasons why ISIS wants to conquer Saudi Arabia. It's because one, it's because of that oil, so that ISIS could be stronger, and so that's a very, very bad harm scenario, and so uh, IB Times says that ISIS. Even okay, so IB Times on January 2014 says that ISIS wants Saudi Arabia's oil, so we know that they want it, and we know that they're capable of doing it from history. And heresy is that ISIS is ISIS is willing to increase their territory and is willing to invade Saudi Arabia, and Saudi Arabia needs the proper assistance from the United States, which will not happen unless we pass our plan. The solvency is that. We're going to increase the protection for uh, Saudi Arabia's territory, which is going to help them defend their land and keep their oil and keep their citizens uh, safe and not displaced from their homes. So the impacts is that we're going to uh, cut off the ability for ISIS to increase their power through um, them get, uh, gaining even more territory and gaining more access to oil fields and just increasing their overall strength for their army. And so with that, they won't be able to increase their control. And so observation number four, advice number three, increasing Middle East relationships. The harm is that right now the United States doesn't have a really good uh, relationship with uh, Saudi Arabia. We usually take United States, like we usually take what's best for the United States and not what's like usually best for the Middle East. And that causes a lot of conflict back and forth. The inherency is that we need to take action for the Middle East, like Saudi Arabia, and do what's best in, for their interests. So the psalm sees that our plan does what's best for their interests, and impacts that we increase the overall uh, relationship between Saudi Arabia and the United States, which can lead to uh, future effective diplomatic relationships. Look what you made me do. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you writing on the back of that? I ran out of paper. It's my fault. <laughs> That's also cool. I'll bring paper next time. No worries. You want to roadmap it? Yeah, for a quick off time roadmap. I'm going to do two uh, DAs. Uh, I'm going to do start with the topicality, two DAs, and then go on to their on case. Or actually, a counter plan, then on case. So I'll have a lot. Um. Okay, so first, I want to start this debate. Well, thank everybody for coming. Let's get into this. I have a lot to talk about. Uh, I want to start this debate with a, a topicality on the words, take action towards ISIS. Uh, their definition is take action means provide, uh, or I mean, take action towards Saudi Arabia, sorry. Uh, this is, they say take action means provide assistance. My counter uh, definition is take action should mean uh, uh, step in and, you know, try and stop what Saudi Arabia is currently doing. Uh, my standards for this are going to be there's a common person standard of when you say take action towards Saudi Arabia, people don't mean go help Saudi Arabia. People are thinking that we have to um, go in and, you know, stop uh, Saudi Arabia from, you know, flogging a person in public. That was the uh, common person. Literature is my second standard of that's what people, when you look it up, that's what you think, that's what the common person thinks. When you Google it, that's what you find. Uh, ways that the U.S. could step in and stop Saudi Arabia from doing what they're doing, not sending them soldiers so they can help out. Um, uh, let me get, I'll get to you at the bottom of this point. Uh, finally, my uh, next standard is a uh, framer's intent. We, our, our original resolution of this was take, U.S. should take action against Saudi Arabia. So that was all in our minds. That was what the framers, when they made this question, decided on. So because of this, um, so then let's go to the, uh, the, the voters on this issue. We lose grounds because all our prep 
is a bet against conflict in the Middle East, how we're going to like lose oil money. So we don't have access to any of our stuff. We have grounds that we should be, our original ground should be that we can go in and help Saudi Arabia against ISIS, create stability. They've taken that ground from us. Uh, and the debate should have been how we should uh, deal with Saudi Arabia, what sort of diplomacy we have with them, and that's not what the debate is. Uh, and this is a priori, so this is the first thing a judge should look at. Okay, let's say. So when you say the common people uh, think that take action should be stopping, uh, flogging the people, do you think the common person cares more about stopping the flogging of people or stopping ISIS and genocide? I don't know. Um, okay, so then to uh, my DA, one of, uh, it's kind of Orient Orientalism and Awasta criticism of this uh, plan. So my first point is going to be, uh, there's a, uh, uh, in the Saudi Arabia specifically, there's a different culture of respect. Uh, the word wasta means respect. And when you go against and you just send in troops to, you know, defend against your uh, against what you perceive as an invasion, it bypasses all of this. It steps on their culture. It says that America knows best, and that's what we're doing. So the B point here is their plan just sends in soldiers to Saudi Arabia, soldiers they didn't ask for, soldiers that, you know, uh, they're going to, look that maybe they're gonna go control the oil fields in Saudi Arabia. There's so much like cultural things that you're just uh, stepping over. You're like putting your own imperialist view on it that only America can solve these problems even though they're already building a 600 mile wall. Something America can't even make a wall between uh, the United States and Mexico. So I think they're doing pretty fine on their own if they're gonna make like a second Great Wall of China. Uh, and then you like bypass all of this. This is going to cause more tension in the Middle East. It's going to think that we're causing, um, like we're sending over soldiers just to protect oil or we're going to, you know, maybe send over soldiers to just take their oil away from the Saudis because they've been the ones who have been keeping uh, our, our oil prices low and maybe they'll interpret it as rich Americans don't like that oil is so cheap. So there's all these issues that like cultural things that we're stepping on and like this imperial mindset we're causing. Not only that, we caused all the problems in the Middle East. We caused ISIS, we caused Al-Qaeda to take power in Iraq and Syria because of these exact same policies. So the impacts here are we're going to have more instability, more death, more conflict because we're just going to send in soldiers to, you know, uh, maybe fight back this one, but we're going to step on so many heads. We're going to make Saudi Arabia uh, uh, an enemy instead of a friend that they are now. We have all this turmoil that you're creating. We know that when you defeat like a terrorist group like ISIS, another one just springs up. So like Al-Qaeda was gone, then ISIS came next. Okay, so my second DA to this is going to be... Uh, sorry, I have none of this written down. Uh, my second DA to this is going to be a world example. Uh, right now, Saudi Arabia is flogging a man in the streets. They have countless uh, human rights violations, and so do we. Uh, the United States just had a torture report come out. Uh, B point is going to be that this plan is going to tell the world that uh, the United States cares about oil more than they care about human rights. We're going to Saudi Arabia to protect oil, even though they're flogging a person, we're just speaking out against Islam, even though we torture civilians. None of that matters to us as long as there's oil. That's what the world's going to perceive us. That's going to increase terrorism. Uh, so the C point is more uh, like propaganda for terrorists. They're going to see it as another war for oil, less help from our allies, you know, uh, France is going to see this after suffering just a major terrorist attack. They're going to see this as antagonizing people, as uh, more bad faith against uh, uh, Islamic peoples. And uh, it's going to create more terrorism, more violence throughout the world. Uh, this is not the time to like be burning bridges right now. Uh, and that's what this whole plan is going to do. It's going to upset Saudi Arabia and it's going to upset uh, the UN, the world, everyone. It's going to uh, Islamic extremists, uh, regular uh, Muslim people, it's going to upset pretty much everybody. So uh, I think this plan is just terrible. So here's my counter plan to that. It's going to be uh, the UN sanction, uh, the UN is going to have uh, a, a resolution, going to go in, talk to uh, Saudi Arabia, decide together what they want to do, and they're going to come up with like a binding resolution. They're going to have a meeting. Uh, the net benefits to this plan is that there's going to be no stepping on toes. We're going to ask Saudi Arabia what they want. It's the world doing it. It's not just the U.S. antagonizing the Middle East again. We have all these things. Sorry, I can't get to you. I'm 
pretty much in protected time. Um, so here's my responses to their on case. They say uh, genocide. It's going to decrease genocide because we're going to go fighting ISIS. Actually, it's just going to be more fuel for the propaganda of ISIS. Uh, it's going to be more fuel uh, for these uh, extremist people. There's going to be more suicide attacks because... Again, you're just sending the message that the United States cares more about oil than they do about the people. Um, there's going to be, like, we don't care about human rights violations. We don't care about anything. All we care about is oil. That's the message being sent. Uh, you're going to decrease uh, all this good faith, uh, like any sort of faith we have in the Middle East. We're going to upset our allies. So you can turn this as going to be more genocide. ISIS, we're, since we're not fighting ISIS, it's just going to stay and continue doing what it's doing. It's just not going to maybe go into Saudi Arabia. Best case scenario, it doesn't extend to Saudi Arabia. Uh, and then geo strategy. They say uh, uh, strategies benefit ISIS for oil. Let's be honest, uh, Saudi Arabia has a pretty... Uh, Comp like they're a pretty, uh, pretty powerful state. It's unlikely that ISIS will take over all their oil fields. So you can just uh, take off this entire advantage because there's nothing. And then finally, they say the increase of Middle East relationship. They say uh, that it uh, the U.S. causes problems in the Middle East and this will increase our relationship somehow, but it won't. So, yeah, sorry. Uh, thank you and vote opposition. Oh, okay. I think he's looking up info right now. <laughs> Docking point. It's like I need to write. I need to write down what I said. <laughs> Just made the entire time. What else was I supposed to do? <laughs> I barely got anything you said. God damn it, Stefan. Yep, I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, you didn't even put in this catapult, did you? Yeah, I did. Did you? This is the end. <laughs> yeah, okay, here's your counter plan. And I totally gave you, I'm doing a lot of work here on cleaning oh, up right. what you said Thank and you. making it into a sentence that, like, you probably should have, it would have been good. The <laughs> counter plan was good. Wonderful, really good. Oh, man. Yeah, you can just look at that for a while. Although, he's going to probably jump right on it as soon as he starts. Yeah. I got it. You're All going right. off and then on? What? What are you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go off, then on. Same order. <laughs> Everybody ready? Cool. So, Lasai and I, as the government came around, when we looked at the resolution and we saw that this house, or, or excuse me, the U.S. would be providing assistance towards Saudi Arabia, we said, well, where does Saudi Arabia really need the most assistance? And as we were looking through the literature, it seemed very obvious that ISIS is right on Saudi Arabia's border with intent to commit genocide and also take territory. So we said that Saudi Arabia needs essentially military assistance. And so that's what we did. So first, let's get to uh, this topicality. So this is on the, the uh, language of take action towards Saudi Arabia. Um, there, our definition was that take action towards Saudi Arabia means provide assistance to, to Saudi Arabia. Their counter definition was it, that take action towards should mean step in and, you know, stop what Saudi Arabia is currently doing. So I think that the counter definition is vague in itself. It doesn't necessarily talk about, like, human rights or talk about, like, maybe economically or perhaps religiously or sectarian uh, what Saudi Arabia is doing that, like, they shouldn't be doing. So I don't think the counter definition is very clear, and so you're going to be preferring the normal definition. But secondly, there's no violation of, like, us providing assistance means that Saudi Arabia will have to, like, stop doing their current course of just building this fence and hoping it works, because now it means that they're going to have this other assistance. So we meet if there is any sort of violation, but there isn't. Uh, their standards of common person. Uh, so then, uh, first, who is this common person? And I think Lasai might have asked in a point of information, like, does a common person care more about this or more about this? Um, and the uh, opposition leader was like, I don't know. So if they don't know really who this common person is, how are they able to say that, like, the common person thinks it's this? But my second response is that 
in debates, just because the common person might not be expecting it, it doesn't mean uh, that that it's and an, in any way abusive. So there, that that's not a standard to prefer. Their second standard is literature. I'm going to counter turn this standard of literature with my own standard of literature. If you type in assistance to Saudi Arabia in Google, it will come up with them building this fence and them actually wanting help from others because it doesn't seem like they're going to be able to stop ISIS on their own. Um, finally, their third standard, framers' intent. Who are these framers? Uh, I guess it was all of us at the same time, but we didn't necessarily all explain what our intent was. Um, and so, further uh, for them, for Spencer to assume that he knows what the intent was, um, I think is uh, not a preferable standard. You're not going to want to look to any of the impacts about ground. Uh, the ground is still the same. They talk about their prep time being wasted. We're still talking about a topic that. Uh, happens in the Middle East, so we're still talking about the same region of the world. Secondly, um, you can you still have a lot of counter plan ground for either more assistance or for um, something that goes beyond the scope of assistance, uh, anything like that. Um, so no ground is taken, um, and so you're going to be able to look to case. Yeah. So is your uh, response to ground that like if you were talking about uh, Israel and Palestine because they're in the Middle East, that would have given us like ample ground. Well, no, but I think if if I were to do that with a resolution like this, yeah, there would be ground abuse. But because we meet every part of the definition and every part of the resolution, there's no ground abuse. Uh, so now let's move on to the first disadvantage one, Orientalism. They basically say this is like a WASTA case, that, that it's supposed to be about knowledge construction and that, like, we don't know what they want and they're, everybody, everybody's going to be upset. Literally, this was said, like, multiple times, everybody will be upset. Religious Muslims, non-religious, any religion, ISIS, anybody, everybody's going to not like this. So here are my responses. My first response is we did this in Iraq, but even more with more troops and advisors, um, and it didn't happen where Iraq got really pissed. In fact, we have the best relationship with the Iraqi government that we've had in, well, since we have invaded. Uh, so my second response is that Saudi Arabia is actually part of the coalition against ISIS that is U.S.-led. So for them to say that, uh, that Saudi Arabia won't want this and it's just going to look like Western intervention... It's just entirely untrue. If you look at Saudi Arabia, and when we talk about knowledge construction, if you're going to run an argument that says we don't know about the knowledge construction, then you should look in the liter literature too. See that the, the construction, knowledge construction that's out there is telling us that Saudi Arabia is basically under attack, and that ISIS says we're going we're gonna to take you next. Um, and, and Saudi Arabia is part of this coalition. My third response is that uh, you, when you say that, uh, oh, well, they're already building a wall, so they're already, already doing it. A wall might have been good back in 16th, 15th century China, but a wall will not stop tanks and artillery, which ISIS has tons of. So the the wall is really like just what they can do to try to show strength, but Saudi Arabia knows they don't have the strength to stop ISIS. So when you get to the impacts, you're going to want to turn them about tensions in the Middle East and how our plan will decrease tensions as ISIS, the most conflictual force there, has their ability diminished. Um, and second, about instability. ISIS is making all of these states unstable. Um, and so by us stopping ISIS, we increase, or we increase stability. Um, and finally, their last impact about increasing conflict, turn that. If we uh, tell ISIS that they're going to be stopped by um, also U.S. forces that are training Saudi Arabian forces... I think ISIS is going to uh, double think about that. Now, uh, let's get to disadvantage two, world example. Basically, this is like modeling. Uh, they try to say that this will tell, like our plan tells the world that all we care about is oil. So uh, my first response is that our plan, first and foremost, what it will do is cost U.S. dollars to save Saudi Arabian lives. If that doesn't look like we're interested in human rights, then I don't know what does. But my second response is that our plan doesn't give us any oil. The U.S. is not taking any oil. Our um, military personnel are not commanding any oil fields. None of this is happening. So this doesn't focus on oil at all. It's about stopping a genocidal uh, group of people, which is what our whole case is about. So um, on the impacts, they're basically all the same as the last one. Keep the same turns about violence decreasing, terrorism decreasing as ISIS's ability is diminished. Let's get to uh, the counter plan. Uh, so counter plan, they say it's binding consultation. So this is where we can run seriously any disadvantage we want. When we tell you that Saudi Arabia funds terrorism, when we tell you that Saudi Arabia always wants political concession, when we tell you that Saudi Arabia always wants to be building more nukes, but they can't because the West keeps them um, on lock, that means that, that Saudi Arabia now, in this binding consultation with the UN, can say, okay, we want to build 100 more nukes, 
We also want to be able to, to fund this terrorist group $100 million more dollars, and the UN will have to say, great, we'll do it, because it's a binding consultation, which is the problem with binding consultations, is that the, the UN and Saudi Arabia don't really have a lot in common, so Saudi Arabia is not going to want what the UN wants, and therefore you're going to have a lot of, lot of negative things, more funding of terrorism, sorry, I don't have time. Uh, let's get to stopping genocide. Our first advantage, and this is where we think you're going to be voting, <clears throat> get dropped to the impacts because their only response is a turn on our impact of decreasing genocide. They say this is going to cause more genocide, um, but look to my argumentation on the off case about how, like, U.S. stopping ISIS has worked to decrease genocide in Iraq, has worked to de de decrease genocide where we get involved, and so we're getting involved. Um... That's the only response. So you can keep our decrease of genocide. Um, you can also flow across our degrading the ability of ISIS and degrading um, ISIS, which is an intergenerational impact for the Middle East, uh, uh, where they're the most violent group that they have ever known, according to many, now is being degraded. That's an intergenerational impact. On advantage two, their only response is that uh, Saudi Arabia is powerful and it's unlikely ISIS takes over all their oil fields. My first response is economically they are, but militarily they're not really. My second response is most people are predicting uh, that Saudi Arabia can't handle them on their own. And my third response is why let ISIS just go in and try to capture it when they say that they will and let violence occur when we know that we can have uh, a lot better training and a lot better strategy. And so that's why you're going to be voting for government today because we stopped genocide. <clears throat> Okay, thank you for being in this debate, and uh, with this, I'd like to start with my topicality. My, I agree with my partner that the UN should take more action in, uh, or that we shouldn't... Okay, the, the, the topic says that the, the US should take action towards Saudi Arabia, not protecting it against ISIS. We're making sure that the people in Saudi Arabia have, have as many rights as, as people here in the US. And my partner has brought up some very good examples that, um, oh, what is it called? Um, a lot of, there was this person over there who has been being flogged and, uh, we believe that that isn't right. And, um, and our opponents made an argument that there is uh, genocide going on into the country and, um, if we if we were to send more troops into the into Saudi Arabia, we would make the conflict even more even worse than it already is. What's your question? Do you think if ISIS took Saudi Arabia, that they would stop flogging people? But here's the thing: ISIS is a small organization. Saudi Arabia is an entire country. It's going to take more than a small organization to try to take over a country. And um, the U.S. is a very strong military power, so by Sending them over there, we're going to cause more conflict, more miscommunication, more, um, just more disturbance into the environment, and we don't want that. And, um, and our opponents have been saying that we should send more troops, uh, to, to help out with Saudi Arabia. How? Uh, are we just going to, they just said that they're going to send them in there to fight back ISIS, but they weren't really specific on exactly what they were going to do to implement that. And so, um, that's... A main, another reason why I think uh, having having the U.S. getting involved with Saudi Arabian affairs would be much more um, much more catastrophic, and um, Okay, so I'm going to go over my DA2, uh, which would be the world example. Um, by sending in troops to, uh, to Saudi Arabia, it's going to send a bad message to countries around it. Like um, France uh, has had a terrorist attack just recently. And by seeing the way that we are doing this, it's going gonna, it's gonna, like, to, the French are going to see this in a very negative way. And um, 
they don't want any more conflict, and it's bad enough as it is. And, uh, that's all I have. Um, okay, I just want to thank everybody for coming, and I'm just going to do straight-up voters right now, and uh, we'll end with those. So my first voter number one is going to be increased terrorism around the world. In this entire debate, it was in com they completely dropped our arguments about how this is going to increase like world terrorism. They said that uh, they responded to, yeah, maybe... Uh, ISIS doesn't take Saudi Arabia, but they never responded to any of my points about how it's going to make uh, the perception in the world is going to be that uh, the United States is just having more war for oil, which is increased propaganda, which is more terrorist attacks. It's like more things that just happened in France recently. You'll see more violence because of this. So bec that dropped argument. First, world terrorism is one of the big ones and a big voter. They never addressed how... Um, how like that would play into anything so because of that drop you can just flow that right across judge secondly uh, is going to be uh, decreasing like alliances with our normal allies they uh, also dropped that any talk about like France not liking this they talked about how I said everybody would be opposed to it but they only addressed how Saudi Arabia wouldn't be opposed to it or how it would affect ISIS they didn't talk about how it's like burning uh, bridges with France and all this, uh, uh, so, yeah. Uh, that last argument, the second voter, is a new argument about uh, decreasing alliances with allies. Uh, my response is I talked about how France and other world powers wouldn't like this, uh, how it would, like, it's not the time to burn bridges. I used that phrase in my original speech. So that's I'll consider paramount it. to the same. Um, okay. 230 left. Okay. Um, so the, this whole friend, so like our allies will not want to like cooperate us with us more. So you can impact all like the burning bridges, how like, because of these increased terrorism, we won't be able to count on like France or England or all these other world powers who, uh, say like that our human rights abuses are bad. Um, and that comes from the world example DA. Uh, then they talked about how, uh, Wasta and how it didn't really mean anything because Saudi Arabia is just like on all these uh, is like on this like council to help stop um, to help stop uh, ISIS but they didn't mention how like like but that's completely different than you know uh, Saudi Arabia inviting soldiers into their country just to defend their oil fields and the perception that's going to lead to which again is going to cause more global terrorism so the global terrorism which means more death more destruction is a, a, a good one and then my next voter is going to be counter plan, uh, our counter plan our counter plan is UN collaborates with Saudi Arabia and their response to that was uh, you know in a binding resolution they can demand to have a hundred nukes built if you think, Judge, that's like a plausible reality that like our diplomats are gonna, uh, that like UN diplomats are gonna succumb to that because they're in a, re like they're trying to stop ISIS. If you think, then you should vote for them because that's ridiculous. That's, we know that's not how, uh, that's not how diplomacy works. You don't have like a binding consultation to fight ISIS and then you demand a thousand nukes. Nothing gets done. There will be no resolution because both sides have to agree to the terms is a binding resolution not like Saudi Arabia just to gets to dictate whatever they want at any point um, 
So, yes, and uh, so for those reasons, I urge you to vote opposition. Thank you. So I'd like to thank everyone being for a quick roadmap, I'm going to go to their voters and then kind of our voters. So their first voter was that they said that our plan was going to increase terrorism and all around the world. However, because how they said that we're going to take oil fields and that we're going to show the world that we only care about oil and not the flogging of the people. However, but our plan shows that one, we're not going to take oil from Saudi Arabia and two, that we care more about stopping genocide and stopping torture, stopping slavery of children and women, and stopping ISIS taking over all of the Middle East more than uh, more than just the flogging of people, and then we could let the flogging of people uh, be stopped through future diplomatic relationships in the future. But we're going to uh, solve for ISIS first, and then the flogging of people uh, second. And so we're going to see that that is what our plan does, that is what our plan shows the world, and that does not lead to increasing terrorism around the world from because they're going to see that our plan is actually helping uh, Saudi Arabia and working together to stop ISIS. And that's going to increase relationships with uh, Saudi Arabia and the Middle East, which I mentioned in one of our advantages. And we've seen this with Iraq, which my partner brought up saying that when we set military advisors and equipment and training for Iraq to help them defend themselves against ISIS, that that helped increase relationships with Iraq. And we didn't take any oil when we did that to help fight against ISIS. So we don't see, so there's no evidence that we're going to take oil against ISIS, I mean, against Saudi Arabia. So they have no access to their, anything they tried to, to uh, persuade you with them trying to oppose on our plans, going to take nothing but oil, not helping stop ISIS. And their second voter of number two of decreasing alliances with France, first of all, one is the United States is the leading uh, world power and influence of the world, most likely, the most dominant. And all, the, all these countries and alliances need the United States. Without the United States, they will lack in power and they will lack in with anything they're trying to get done. So they're going to stick with the United States whether or not we pass or don't pass this plan. So that is not a reason to uh, vote against our plan because we're still going to be uh, alliance with France. We're going to have relationship with France because France needs the United States more than the United States needs France. So that's not a reason to vote against the plan. And their third voter against the WASTA, they said that all this WASTA and Orientalism and that the different cultures and that, like we mentioned, that Saudi Arabia is part of the coalition against ISIS. Their motive is to protect their people and stop ISIS. And the best way to get this done is to team up with the United States to work together with the coalition against ISIS so that they can stop committing uh, genocide and stop gaining more control, stop gaining more oil fields, and gaining more power dominance and recruiting more members to commit these horrible crimes in the Middle East. And we see this, the United States has done this past with uh, multiple Middle East countries, so it makes sense to only do it again with Saudi Arabia because for all the reasons we provided before, their counter plan, you're not going to vote on the counter plan because it says that it's a binding counter plan with Iraq, uh, Saudi Arabia, which was very vague. And so that could lead to anything. It could lead to, they didn't say what was going to be discussed. They just said, whatever Saudi Arabia wants, we're going to do it. It's binding. So Saudi Arabia is going to say, we want to have as much nuke as we possibly can. And you're going to have to do it because your, your counter plan is binding. If that's something you uh, support and vote for, then that's something that you're going to be voting for them. So you don't want to vote for the opposition for that. So... Oh, that counter plan is going to lead to global nuclear war. And we do not want global nuclear war and the binding plan with Saudi Arabia that says, do whatever Saudi Arabia wants. So you're definitely not going to vote on the opposition on the counter plan, so don't vote on the opposition case. They also dropped a T argument, 
So all we have left is the on case of our plan. So for our voters on why you're going to vote for us is because our plan stops genocide and it cuts off it cuts off the power of ISIS because having uh, Saudi Arabia teamed up with the United States and our United States funding of $500 million of equipment with advisors and training, that's going to give them enough power to fight back against ISIS, decrease their power, cut off their access to money, not allow them to increase their territory, not allow them to increase their oil fields, which ISIS is willing and wanting to do, and even uh, officially stated that they want to conquer Saudi Arabia. This is our plan to stop this from happening and to just decrease ISIS. So we're going to see uh, saving lives, saving people from being displaced from the homes, and also just overall increasing relationships with the Saudi Arabia because we're going to be working together with them and that could lead to future diplomatic uh, situations like the flogging of their people. We can have diplomatic relationships with them. It's not